Hi, it's Jen back with tea and cookies for two for April. I could not resist the lovely pastel colors of spring. This is called Springs in Town by Riley Blake. Really fun. We are enjoying our series. I hope you are too. I hope you've had some cookies. <laughs> we have my grandmother's uh, sour cream sugar cookie recipe. Kathy Maruzzi, who's on Team Shabby, has an awesome shortbread. And maybe you've made a completely different cookie. And if you're willing to share your recipe, put it in the comments. <laughs> I have a feeling a lot of us will be making it. So if you're just now seeing this series, we actually started this back in February where we kicked that off with our Valentine project. And basically we're making a patchwork block. We're doing just a little bit of fusible applique and then we're doing a really cool self-binding technique to complete our placemat and the kit makes two. The kit's the easiest way to go. Your pattern's included. All of these fabrics are included. The only thing extra that you would need to pick up would be some fusible fleece or batting for the inside. And if you wanna use our exact thread, be sure to pick up that thread set, super affordable. Why not just get that? When you get ready to create these, you pull out your thread, do your stitching, do your top quilting, and you're already done. I love that. And you're not digging in that a sewing basket trying to find the perfect color that I always seem to not have actually when I'm looking for it. So as we continue through our series, as you know, we'll be focusing just on the patchwork block because of the rest of the assembly is the same. And again, if you're brand new joining us, be sure to check out that first video that we did for the February project where I take you through all of the steps of how to complete that self-binding aspect. So let's just be focusing on our patchwork block that we're doing here, nice and simple. And we're going to give you an option of how to make what's called the half square triangle. And that's what's here on this corner. The option would be to take your two fabrics here. And you're just gonna be cutting those into quadrants. So you have your two fabrics here, placing them right side together, drawing the line either corner to corner or using my favorite technique, which is a creative grid tool. If you watched any of our other videos, you're like, I've seen you use this so many times. You certainly have. <laughs> it's my definite go-to anytime nowadays that I'm making half square triangles, because as I've said before, and I'll say again, I am infinitely more precise when I get to sew on a drawn line than have to track a quarter inch away from a line that would be drawn corner to corner. You understand that difference? So we simply sew on the line and we've done that ahead of time. And now I'm going to cut from corner to corner. Let me go do that real quick. Just grab any ruler corner to corner and give a cut. Now, anytime you're making half square triangles this way, you'll get two of those. So you get these two, you'll need to do it again, and two more times for the other placemat. We'll now press to the darker color, the pink. And these are oversized. Why do we wanna go oversized? Why? Because we get to square up. As we know with patchwork blocks, anytime, that we get to oversize something and use a tool to square that up, the likelihood of our block coming out exactly the right size is exponentially increased, very much in our favor whenever we get to do that. So if you're gonna take this approach to making these half square triangles, now I love to grab my two and a half inch creative grid, little tiny ruler here, it's so cute, laying this directly on the seam. And the goal is to be able to trim around all four sides. So don't sit that in that corner. Get that in a place where you can trim around all sides. As you can see, it works very well with a spinning mat. We get everything lined up. Cut. Move that out of the way. Trim and then one more time. And now we have a perfect, perfect two and a half inch half square triangle. And you would complete that with this one and the others. What's the second approach? The second approach 
gives you all eight of the half square triangles and one false swoop and you do not need to trim up. That basically means that two and a half inch ruler is not needed. There's some benefits to doing it this way. You also don't need to draw the line from corner to corner or use this tool and draw on either side. What is this technique? This is called star singles. Again, if you've been watching for any time, you're like, I have absolutely seen you use this many times. Well, I'll show that to you in case you haven't seen that. Star singles do that exact thing. Eight half square triangles in one fell swoop with no trimming. Amazing. I should say no squaring up. How does that happen? So the first thing that we do is we get two squares, two of these squares, right side together. And you simply place your paper over top of that and you're going to pin in those open areas. Here's something, a pointer. This particular star singles we're using are two inch finished. Star singles come in a variety of sizes. So past this project, beyond this project, if you wanna use star singles or make half square triangles that are three inches, maybe one and a half inch, star singles come in a variety of sizes. So if that's you and you love to make pinwheels, half square triangles, head over to the website and pick up the sizes you need. For the project we're doing, you would be picking up the two inch star singles because they're based on a finished size. This is two and a half finishing, once we sew a quarter inch all the way around, finishing at two inches. So be sure to pick up the two inch star singles. The instructions are written right on the paper. It says half square triangle for two inch finished block. Cut six inch squares of fabric. Note to self and note to you. We upsize that to be around six and a quarter, maybe even six and a half. Why? I want to see my fabric all the way extending past my paper to know I absolutely have not missed any of the fabric being scooted inside. If I cut this to six inches, that would be inside this paper and I wouldn't really know. I'd have to be much more precise of where that paper is positioned. You get the idea. You have plenty of fabric in your kit to be able to upsize that. And you only need to cut one of the pink and one of the cream to make eight of these. Once you have that, notice the numbers. We have dash lines, we have solid lines. Dash lines are for sewing, solid lines are for cutting. Make sure you are sewing on a shortened stitch length and using the needle down feature of your machine. You'll simply come right off of the edge, sew right on, Stop at that solid line. That's the needle down function, turn, sew, stop at your next black circle, and you continue all the way around until you sew right off. Once you've done that, we'll remove our pins. Remember what I said, that we're going to now be cutting on our solid lines. Be very intentional about this step because remember how we're not gonna square this up after the paper is, is trimmed. What you cut is what will be sewn into your project. Uh, you know, and I missed that line just a little bit. Let me trim that. There we go. So you get the idea. You are trimming on the solid lines. Now, let me just trim off one of the corners. And I wanna show you about removing the paper and let's do a measurement check. Let's cut that solid line. The other great part about perforating short and stitch length is that it perforates the paper. Makes it really easy for that to remove. As far as thread goes, we're using a 50 weight. The Carrera set from Orafil, all you're gonna need all you're ever going to need through this whole series for the patchwork part. Obviously for the top quilting and for the machine applique, the colored thread set comes into play. But for patchwork, all you need is that Carrera set or any gray that you have or white, your preference. Let's take that measurement check and you're going to go, whoa, that's the way to go. 
right? The only thing we need to do is just trim off our little dog ears. But let's do a measurement check. It's perfect. Ready to go into the project. And in one sheet, I will have eight. Four for this block and four for the other block that goes into the other placemat. Awesome. Choose your journey, <laughs> whether you want to do it traditionally, the way I first showed you, or pick up the star singles. However you want to do that, you'll need to prepare eight heavier half square triangles. Go ahead and set those aside. You can see the center is just a square. Easy peasy. Here, all we've done is a little bit of strip piecing. Two pieces of fabric, right side together. Sew a quarter of an inch. And when we press this, something we've discovered is it's just something that over the years you kind of start to learn. There are people that feel that if you press a strip piecing unit this way, that there can be almost a bow in it. And that pressing it vertically will reduce what's called that rainbow effect. So for that reason, we'll press it vertically off to the side, a little bit of finger pressing, and work our way up. Once that's pressed to the dark, now we begin to subcut that into our units that are needed to be on either side. I'll start cleaning that up just a bit, right? Here we are here. This is, remember, this is what we're going for. So we start laying out our block. And as you would expect, we're simply placing this right side together, sewing a quarter of an inch. We just opted to press toward the blue. Same thing here press toward the blue. So that middle section is done. Now for the upper portion here, let's see if we're all squared up on that one. Looks like we are. Our upper portion here, let me grab one of the ones that we I know we've squared up. There we go. So you're laying this out on the top, right side together. Doesn't matter whether you sew from this side or this side. Hey, I want to sew. I'm going to go sew, okay? I'm missing my sewing machine right now. I'm going to go sew this and sew this on the other side. And I want to sew the row and show some pinning where we're going to pin in order to achieve those nice points. So let me go get this sewn together. So remember that we pressed away from the center. To have interlocking seams now, since this is going this way, we're going to press toward that middle portion. Interlocking seams we know are a key to having blocks come out with the points exactly as we would hope. Now that we're here, that's that lock right there. As a young quilter, you might have heard me say this before, not really having any training, just a lot of desire <laughs> to quilt and having a hunch at best. I kind of just, I knew I had to go right side together and I just pinned left to right and prayed. <laughs> now I know what matters the most, those points, First off, the pressing is very important. Getting the interlocking seam really nearly assures you those points are gonna be exactly as you would hope. So we'll pin there first and pin the other point. Then once that's complete, now we go pin the two ends and we sew. Let's go do that.
So let's look at that. We're going to press toward the middle. See how it wants to do that? Let's do that. We're going for that. <laughs> All right, and then of course the bottom row, same thing. Flip that, just turn the whole block around, right? So you're getting a good view kind of from the top, pinning. And pinning right there, and then pin on our corners. If you just get in the discipline of trying to go for interlocking seams, you know, a lot of quilt patterns aren't very explicit, not ours, but a lot of them out there are just say pressed. You're like, where? If you keep in mind that you want interlocking seams whenever you can achieve them, and you do that, with that in your mind, you, your blocks are going to come out more square. Notice I've also got some aids on my machine. I'm an honest quilter. I can vary in my quarter inch. In fact, I'm gonna move mine over just a touch here, my seam guide. I can vary this seam guide that I've put down here. I've learned that on my diagonal seam tape, if I just see that black line, that's where it should be. It's gonna, you should wanna test this out on your machine. If, you're, if you also struggle with consistency with quarter inch seam allowance, Consider getting those guidelines. They're incredible. All right, and let's press toward the middle once again. Oh, I have a rolled seam. Learning. That, don't accept that. Don't accept that. Grab the seam ripper, pop that one thread right there, roll that back. Let's head back to our sewing machine. Whenever I have that and I pop that stitch, I just start a little ahead of it, go over it and stop. So now, now that's what we were hoping to see, right? Everything's gonna lie nice and flat. And you can imagine if you were getting a rolled seam and you're sewing with flannel, it is really noticeable. You can really see that slight bump because now you've got so much more fabric laying back on top of itself. Now our block is nice and flat and ready to accept our borders. So this is also from Riley Blake, just like we did in our initial video. We're putting our side orders on here. Now here, what matters? That it's the right length. So pin here and here. And depending on how flat, see how when I just pull this, everything's lovely. I just didn't press it out flat enough. So once you have it all where you want that to be, simply pin. And I would actually be pinning from the other side I want to keep these seams in my view. Why? I don't want another rolled seam. I already had one. We already experienced that. And I could have cut film and went back. I want you to see real life, <laughs> what happens and what you should do when that happens. I, it's very important you understand the authenticity here. I'm not here to show you perfection. I'm not a perfect quilter. I want you to see reality and what do you do about it? So in this instance, being able to sew on this side assures me I'm gonna keep those in my sight. There's no ruled seams to have on the back side. So when you put those borders on, sew from this side that has all the seams, you'll do the side borders first, and we went ahead and pressed to the outside, and then in comes our top uh, little trim here on our block. And now you're off to doing the applique elements. And just like you would expect, pre-fuse laser cut applique, you're not having to trace and cut the scallop out. I don't know if I've ever put, cut a perfect curve. I try, <laughs> but they're never perfect. And I love that part. I love that I don't have to worry about that. So in your kit, you'll just peel this back and this should release. Peel that off. Bring that right to your pressing mat. Of course, you're just gonna be ironing that down. And that's where you're putting in your beautiful 
peach color, kind of coral colored, and we just stitched around that. And as you can see, we just right side together, quarter inch seam allowance, press, and now you're off to the self binding component. And so many people are actually enjoying not having to make traditional binding. It's a really fun technique. Be sure to pick up, if this is the first time you're picking up any kits, this is such an important notion. Um, I covered that in a lot of detail and I'm when we went into the deep, kind of the deep dive of that very first video where I show you how to do the self binding. It's a really cool technique. Uh, you'll need some marking tools, some good straight lines to get the nice miter. But this is what we use to poke those corners out so we have a nice 90 degree corner. So if you are going to be picking up the kits and you don't have a point turner, be sure to grab that as well. Grab your thread set, any other notions you might need, subscribe. There's so much coming your way and we have also kicked off a new series, Foundation Paper Piecing, our second series. And you're going to want to check that out. If you've been dragging your feet as I was for years, on foundation paper piecing, don't let that happen. Jump into the fun, watch a video, it's free. And you're gonna go, wow, so that's cool. You're gonna wanna jump into that series as too. So as I said, pick up your kit, subscribe, and I'll see you next month as we continue our tea and cookies for two. This time coming up will be May. I'll see you soon. Bye.